Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwaratan and today I will be talking about documenting our code with Doxy. In this video, we will talk about Doxy, requirements for Doxy, how to document our code, how to create a tutorial for our code, and finally, how to share our documentation with others. Doxy is a built-in documentation rendering tool that allows developers to easily build documentation for their code. Traditionally, developers would create documentation for their code via comments, and then separately create documentation files for reference for other developers. Doxy combines the two steps into a single step, making it easy for developers to write documentation and for others to read that documentation. So what do we need? This functionality is built into Xcode, so no other tool is required. You may need a hosting server in case you wish to host a web version of the documentation. In this video, we will be using GitHub Pages to host our documentation. A key component to generate documentation are comments that you have written. The comments must be formatted in a particular way so that Xcode can read them and use them to build the documentation. I have already covered this in an earlier article. However, we will have a look at some of those comments in a bit. You can find the link to this article in the comments section of the video. The source code itself provides a lot of information through declarations of types along with the add rate availability attributes. All these sources combined together provide a lot of information. But we are not just limited to these sources. We can add two other kinds of resources to our projects. Articles and Tutorials Articles allow us to provide a little more context to the documentation. This is where advanced concepts such as functionality, underlying behavior, things to know are presented to the user. It is even possible to add diagrams and pictures to explain the concepts. Tutorials on the other hand allow the creator of the code to offer help to anyone who uses the code so that they can learn how to use the different features with the help of step-by-step -step instructions. Both articles and tutorials add to the resources to make the documentation richer and more helpful. Let us see how we can use all these resources with an actual project. The process of creating documentation for apps, packages, frameworks is largely similar. We will be using an example to understand how this goes. I will show only a small snippet of code comments out here, but you can download the completed project at the bottom of the article. You can find the link to this article in the comments section of the video. We are going to take a structured approach towards designing the documentation. First, we will add the add rate availability attributes. Then we will put comments for our code. Comments formatted in a particular way. Third, we will add articles to our code. Fourth, we will provide tutorials for our code. So let's get started. For our demo, we will be using a Swift package called Amaranthin library. 
This contains code that helps people make software that could be used in libraries. We have several different types in there, representing different aspects of the library, such as author, book, the associate types on the book, the type that represents the library itself, along with a type of genre with its conformance to the different protocols. Now, we can go ahead and build the documentation for this right now itself. But notice that there's a small error. We will be fixing that in a moment. This error is basically because the date dot now is visible from available from iOS 15 or later only. If we attempt to build the documentation, it should not work. Let's try that. As you can see, the attempt to build it failed. So make sure that your code is always correct and compiles properly before you go and attempt to make the docu documentation. Let us fix this for now and try to recreate the documentation. There you go, the documentation has been created. You can see it on the left hand side area, which is under the name of our project. And it's created the same way as documentation for all the other code that Apple provides in the same place. And if you expand it, you can see that based on whatever little information is available, it's already built a basic documentation for us for all the types listing out it's different values, it's conformance to different protocols, uh, different methods that are available. Everything is neatly listed out in the same visual appearance as the general documentation that is available for all the other frameworks that Apple has. But we would like to improve on this. And as a first step, we'll start adding availability attributes. <clears throat> These specify when a certain feature, type, function was available. I will add an availability attribute for the Swift version, indicating that it's available from Swift version 5.0. And I will add another availability attribute for the platform. I can mention <clears throat> things like when it was introduced, when it was deprecated, some message as to when, what the user should do if it's deprecated, what should be used instead, and so on. But for now, we'll go in for a simple availability attribute that specifies from which version of iOS and macOS is this particular attribute available. There you go. Now I can just copy this and I can, because I want the same attributes available elsewhere, apply it to all the different types in there. Of course, if you wish, you can have different versions for the attribute. 
So different types maybe could be available from different versions. Uh, you have that flexibility based on your requirements. And now that we've done adding the attributes, we can go ahead and try to build our documentation again. And there you go, you can see at the top, it's added the availability requirements information to the document documentation that was generated, along with all the other information that it picked up. And it's done this for all the other types. Now let's add comments to our code. The comments that we write have to be formatted in a particular way. I've already covered this in an earlier article, the link for which you can find in the article I've written. Let me start off by declaring a block comment. <clears throat> now this is a special block comment with two asterisks indicating that the document uh, <clears throat> comments written here will be part of the documentation. I start off by giving the description of what this specific type does. And then I can give specific information such as the protocols it conforms to, By placing the text in backticks, I can specify that this should be rendered as syntax. I can provide version information. What's the version of this particular type? In this case, it's version 1.0. Some notes for reference. Since when was it available, though we've already taken care of this using the availability attributes. The author for this particular code, useful if someone wants to find out who wrote this specific code. Copyright information. date when this code was first written. Any requirements? I could mention the Swift version requirements out here, for example. I can also provide contact information as special links. Within square brackets, I can show what the link should display, followed by round brackets where the actual link is there. So here I'm putting a link to my email address. Using mail to as the link.
I can also put links to a website if I want. I could provide a tip. Let's provide a tip. And the tip itself could contain a link. In this case, I'll put a link to the article where I talk about how you could generate markup comments for Swift. Like before in square brackets, the text that will be shown on the link followed by within round brackets the link to that specific website. I would encourage you to go and explore this article to find out the different options available for comments. There you go, I've added the link. Now all that's left for us to do is to build the documentation and see what this produces. There you go. What it's done is it's added all the comments we have put in to the documentation along with all the other information such as the availability attributes. You can see the different information in the form of versions, author, copyright, date, requirements all listed out here including the links to our website. And the link to the email so if you click on it it directly takes you to the mail application where it composes the message that you wish to send we don't want to send an email right now all the other information that it had gathered is also displayed along with the information collected from the comments that we've put in place this allows us to create really rich documentation that is very helpful to anyone reading our code. Now what's left to do is to add comments for all the other types in our code. It's going to be in a similar format that you see out here for author. You can add it to types, you can add it to functions, you can add it to properties, you can add it in different places. So I've added comments to, to all the other types in our project with its appropriate description and remember, it's not necessary that you have to apply, you know, provide comments for everything. In many cases, the code is self-explanatory. So comments should only be there in places where it's really required. Notice there are other attributes such as warnings. There you go, all the code has the comments in place. Now that we've added some information to our code with the help of availability attributes and comments, let us look at how articles allow us to provide more information about the different types that we've declared in our code. We can either add or completely replace the contents of the documentation. So let us go ahead and create this for our code. Now that we've added information to a code using availability attributes and comments, let us go and add articles. Now, in order to add articles and tutorials to our package, 
we first need to add something called as a documentation catalog. The documentation catalog is what holds articles, tutorials, and resources needed by those together. To add that, we we'll click on File in the menu bar, New, File, scroll down to the documentation section and select documentation catalog. You can see it adds one article in there and a folder to hold resources, which is empty right now. Now, this article that they've added is typically a top level article that represents information about the entire package itself. The style of formatting is fairly similar to markdown comments that you may have encountered. But of course, there are some other interesting styles in here too. For example, writing information within double backticks. That allows links to be created in the documentation to a particular resource. For example, here, we are writing documentation specific to this package. In the summary, you can give information. The overview, overview section is used to provide a little more information. It's also a place where you can add images to your documentation. We'll have a look at both. First, I'll start by writing some text in there. Next, we will add an image. Now, let's look at how we can add an image. First, let me send one across. We will add these images to our resources folder. That's the appropriate folder to hold our resources in. So I will control click on that folder, select add files to resources. And on the desktop, I've added quite a few images. We'll add all those and keep as we will be needing them in our project.
But right now we are specifically interested in the library image. Now in order to add that, we first need to specify its caption, library types, and in the round bracket, the name of the image. Again, this will only work if the image is added to the resources of the documentation catalog. I can create my own section under overview. Say one called types, where in a tabular manner, I can list out the type and a little description about the type. We've got four types in there. A single backtick is to inform the compiler that it should render it as a syntax. On topics, we can put links to different articles. We do not have any articles in there yet, but as and when we get those, we will add the links out here. And you can have other sections in there too. I will also add a small attribute indicating that this is under the MIT license. So this will render the license information as fine print right at the body. And just to keep it consistent, I can rename this as the name of the project. Let's see what this creates. Product build documentation. That's your author information based on the comments we provided earlier. But this time when we select the project, it's our project documentation. This has been rendered using the article for the entire package. With the overview, the image, all the types listed in tabular form, note the rendering in the form of syntax, uh, we don't have any topics right now. It just lists out structures and enumerations. Let's add one more article. This time we'll add it for author. I'll do it for one and the process is going to be similar for the rest. So let me show you that, file, new, file. Again, scroll down. And this time I want an article file. I will call this author article and place it again 
within the documentation catalog. It looks similar and in fact it's the same markdown syntax that we have along with some custom syntax that is there specifically for Doxy. So again in double backtick we can create links to items within the package. So I can mention the package slash followed by the subtype within the package and it creates a link for that. I can even provide metadata information. For example, I could say that the page color should be green. A little later, we'll go through the different metadata attributes and other attributes that we can add out here. So I want the page color to be green and What I want to inform the compiler is that I wish to override the documentation created by the compiler. Meaning rather than using what the compiler creates, we will replace all that with the documentation generated by this article. As I mentioned earlier, everything is added to what the comp documentation compiler generates. But now we are saying, no, that's not what I want. What I want is to completely create the documentation on my own. If I wanted to add to the documentation, I will just not mention the documentation extension. Or if I do, I would mention the merge behavior as append. A little summary. The author, and you can see the completion comes in. The author type a little overview. Again, we can have an image. Some information. Yes. We will add a section called output, which would provide information about how this type is printed out when we request a description. And when we do it, I can specify that what is written below should be rendered as a shell syntax or as it appears in terminal. and a closing triple back tick to mark the end of syntax. I can also provide information 
much like what we provided through our comments. So for example, a note. Add a tip we can add the same tip from our comment out here so we can provide all this information that we've written directly in the article too similarly we can provide contact information and I will just pick it up from here simple We don't need anything else. Let us see what this generates. Now note this time, it's generated information based on what we have provided rather than what is there in the comments. Okay. With the image information output uh, description, the information that we have provided. Notice the back ticks mean that there are links to those specific properties or types. And there you go. Likewise, I can add information for the other types. So similarly, I've added articles for book, genre, and library information. And now that we've added these articles in here, I can update my original top level documentation to have direct links to those topics. And the way we do that is by using the doc keyword and specifying information such as book information library information and so on let's see how that renders up there you go book information library information straight out here. Now that we've seen how to add articles to our package, let us look at tutorials. Tutorials, as the name suggests, are simple guides that walk you through the usage of your code. It's a great way to help users of your code to learn how to use the types and functions that you have declared. Tutorials can also include assessments. They are a great way to help users check their progress and to make sure they've understood everything. Tutorials are easy to create. Let's go ahead and create one. Now before we go ahead and create tutorials, let's organize all the articles in a single folder. While not strictly necessary, it's quite useful, especially if your documentation turns out to be fairly large. So we'll move all those articles in the articles folder. Now let's go ahead and add tutorials. The first thing we'll actually add is a table of contents for our tutorial. So I'll go to the new file template, scroll down and select tutorial table of contents. Um, I might as well create a new folder here for tutorials. Okay. 
As the name says, the table of contents contains a list of all the tutorials that are going to be available as a part of this documentation. And to make things easier, they already have some pre-written code out there. We can give our tutorial a name. We can give the introduction title. Some text that goes in along with it. and an associated image. We'll use one that was added earlier. This is followed by the chapters or the individual tutorials. You can even organize them into separate volumes, especially useful if you have many tutorials out there. So the first volume that we'll have is on creating types. And the volume itself can have some description. For example, and like before, an image. And then the chapter. So let's say we are creating how to create a book. The chapter will have some description. We'll have an image and a reference to the tutorial. Now we haven't created one yet. So there's nothing to put here out immediately. We will be coming to that in a moment. But this is going to reference the actual tutorial file itself. Now, within the tutorial table of contents, you could also have a link or references to other resources. kind of resources you could add include videos and of course a link to that I will add those links in a bit Uh, within which I could also have a link to my blog, which is of course where this article is.
now I'll just put a simple link to YouTube but of course it, it will eventually contain my channel information in there you could provide a link to sample code so here I could give a link to my github repository Again, we can have a link here. And documentation. Again, we can have a link to that also. In fact, as an example, I'm putting a link documentation I have generated for a package that I use quite often in training using Doxy. This documentation was created using Doxy. Of course, Amaranthan library is the current library. The completed version is out there. So I already have this documentation hosted on GitHub pages. Of course, I will be walking you through that process. So you can have all these resources in here. Now, let's just look at how to create the tutorial so we can add the documentation out here. If you attempt to build the documentation, it's not going to work completely. You can see a few of the things have come up, but not exactly the way we want. Uh, this chapter doesn't lead us anywhere. But here you can see the resources, sample code, and documentation available. And of course, you get a warning from the documentation compiler saying, hey, I expect something out here. So now let's create a tutorial. Like before, we will go create a new file. And this time, it's going to be a tutorial file. So I will call this book tutorial. Now, one of the things you need to provide is the amount of time. This is time in minutes that you expect this tutorial to take. So I'm saying, hey, it takes about 10 minutes to complete this tutorial, for example. There is an introductory title for the tu tutorial itself. including some welcome text. And you don't have to have an image. We've cre used images before, uh, but you don't have to have an image. You can have multiple sections in your tutorial, but for us, we'll just have one.
even and then of course steps now how do we create these steps there are two parts to it in fact there are three there's the text which explains what's to be done in the step there is an image that generates a preview or shows you the preview for that particular code so in case this is for a full-blown app and there is a user interface involved uh, you can give screenshots on what the user should expect to see on the simulator uh, using these images and there is also code now what you want to do here is walk the user through different steps so you need we won't be needing images for this because there are no images we will be needing code steps we will have to create multiple versions of the same file with each successive version having different steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the code files in. I've already put them on the desktop. I will just add them to the project here. And again, we can go ahead and organize this in a new folder also. So we can put this as images. just so that it's neat and easy for us so if you want to see this is the book code file this would be the file for step one step two you can see a new line is added step three step four step five and this is what's going to be presented to the user so you need to create multiple versions of this one for each step so step one create the author object so we're explaining what we're going to do the name of the file will always be the same here but the actual file itself will have the name that you've put out here so the next step create I'll just copy this because it's largely going to be the same except now this will be file number one this still remains the same step two create the variable that holds the book style step three gather additional book details step four There you go. And now with this ready, we can update our document to book tutorial. And let's try building the documentation.
there you go there is our tutorial creating an instance of book 10 minutes step one create the author object you can see the steps get highlighted as we move ahead step two create the variable that holds genre step three and you can see the changes are highlighted to draw attention create the variable that holds the book style step four gather additional book details and finally step five create the book so this way users can learn how to create an object of the type and of course if you have any images they would show up here in the preview useful for ui based tutorials A nice feature within tutorials is the ability to add assessments. Assessments are a good way of helping readers determine if they have understood specific aspects of the code well. It's also a good way to drive home key concepts related to the code. There are multiple choice questions with one correct answer, and at least three options need to be provided. Assessments are added to the tutorial and is located at the bottom of the tutorial section. Let's add an assessment to our tutorial. Now, there's one other thing we can add to our tutorial after the section, and that's assessments. So, we'll create multi choice multiple choice assessment which requires a question for example which of the following types is not used while creating an instance of book Followed by choices. Each choice has to be marked as to whether it's the correct one or not. So in this case, I'm going to give a, a false choice. Uh, the answer that's going to be shown to the user is float. That's what they have to choose. And we also have to provide a justification as to why This is wrong with a little bit of a hint. So similarly, I'll add another incorrect choice. Uh, I'll add correct choice to and of course when it's correct our reaction should be different So let's see how this comes up. We'll build the documentation again. Go to our tutorial. And now once we reach the bottom of the tutorial, we get the assessment to check your understanding. So which of the following types is not used while creating an instance of book? So I select an answer and if I submit, it tells me whether it's wrong or not. And then of course, eventually when I do select the right answer, gives me feedback and I can have multiple such uh, questions in there. Check the user's progress. 
So that's how you can add tutorials and assessments. As you can see, there are many kinds of attributes available for Markdown. They can be used within articles, top-level documents, or tutorials. We have already seen some of the attributes in action. Let's look at a few more. A lot of attributes can be added in the form of metadata. In fact, we already saw documentation extension where we can specify whether we want to override or append the documentation. We can specify the page color, whether the document is a technology route in the sense it's a top level document, or from when is the documentation available, uh, actions such as redirecting to a particular link or downloading resources, uh, what kind of pages uh, are we trying to show? Is it an article or a sample code? An image for the page? What name to display for the page? Languages that are supported uh, by this documentation? Uh, certain automatic settings that can be enabled or disabled, such as see also title heading and subheadings, including a visual style for how topics should be presented. We can also control visual elements of the document by, for example, showing data in a row and column structure or to show data in a tabbed manner. We could have a list of links, uh, disclaimer text, such as small text or fine print, and in fact, even comments, which are basically for authors of the documentation. They are used to add information about what needs to be done and uh, what is still pending. Key point to note is comments are not included in the rendered documentation. Now that we've seen different ways of documenting our code, it's time to start sharing it with our users. Of course, whenever users of our package add the package to their project, they can simply build the documentation as we have been doing so far. But in some situations, users would like to go through the documentation beforehand or would like to access it to check something. It is possible to export our documentation to make it accessible to them. There are a couple of ways of exporting our documentation. We can directly export the documentation from the graphical user interface, or we can use the docsy command from the command line interface to generate one. Let us have a look at both. Let's look at how we can export the documentation using the graphical user interface. I have my documentation, the articles, resources, tutorials already. To export it using the graphical user interface, we first need to build our documentation. Now, normally we just look at the documentation from out here. But if you notice right next to the documentation, there is a more button. If I click on it, I can choose to export this documentation. Let's save it on the des desktop for now. And that's it. I've got a documentation archive there. I can even close the project and I no longer need to build the documentation. If I want to view it, I can simply open this file and it shows the documentation already for me out there. So this is an excellent way of sharing the documentation. Now, let us look at how we can export the documentation using the command line interface. Exporting the documentation using the command line interface is very easy. And it has one advantage which the graphical user interface approach doesn't have. We'll see that in a moment. But first, in order to export our documentation from the command line, we need to get the Swift Doxy plugin. I've already updated the package.swift file to add a dependency for that plugin, which you can see is reflected out here. I have also uploaded the entire library to GitHub. This is important because we're going to use it in a moment. So how do we go ahead and upload and create our documentation. 
first we will go to our Swift package folder. Once we are in there, we will run the command to generate the package. In fact, this command is enough. It, this should also generate the documentation. But I want to do something a little different. I want to point the package generation tool to GitHub. Copy the URL and I'll explain in a moment why I want to copy and include the GitHub repository. Now, what is this command going to do? It is going to generate the documentation, but when it's generating the documentation, it's also going to reference the GitHub repository and use it to generate links to the files in the GitHub repository. And the completed documentation will then be saved at this path. So let's run this. There you go, it's quickly built the documentation and it's given the path out here. It's in a hidden folder within uh, Swift package, plugins, Swift Docs, output, and the doc archive output. Let us navigate to that location. Let's quickly view the hidden items, build, plugins, Swift Docs, outputs, and there's the archive. In fact, let me copy this to the desktop. And if I open this one, it's the same documentation, but now there's an extra link here, a link to view the source file for this particular time. And that takes me straight to the GitHub page and that specific source file. This is very, very useful. There you go. Those are the two different ways of exporting documentation. I'm going to leave this documentation here because we will now need it for our next topic, which is hosting the documentation. Exporting documentation is one way of sharing the documentation, but it would be even better if we could publish it as a web page. There are a couple of ways of publishing the documentation to a website. We could simply host it on a file server, a web server with custom routing, or static pages on GitHub. In this video, we're going to look at how to host them as static pages on GitHub. GitHub offers a simple way of hosting static web pages. This feature is appropriate for our documentation. In order to host static pages on GitHub, you will need a GitHub account. You can create one for free if you want. There are three broad steps involved in hosting our documentation web page on GitHub. The first is to create the GitHub repository for hosting the website. Next, we will need to generate the publishable version of our documentation. And finally, we will need to upload the documentation to GitHub. Let's look at these three steps in detail. In order to host our page on GitHub, we need to decide how we will host it. There are three options. We can host it as a site connected to a project on GitHub, a site hosted 
in a repository owned by a personal user account or a site hosted in a repository owned by an organization. For this demo, we will be going in for an organization site. So let's create a site. For that first, I will create a new organization. There are different options available. Uh, for our purposes, a free organization is good enough. Next, we will give our organization a name. Now, generally this would be the name of your company, but what's important to note is that this name is also going to be part of your repository's name. So please make sure that you do select an appropriate name. I will call this since I already have an organization with the name Amaranth and Light. I will provide an email address business or institution, name of the business, verify this account, accept the terms and conditions, and create. You can add members if you wish. For now, we'll skip. We have our organization ready. Now we will create a repository to host our website. So let's go to repositories, new repository, and the name. The name has to match the organization name. Followed by GitHub. This is important. You can provide a description, mark it as public, choose to add a readme file, and go ahead and create the repository. Now, we're not done with the repository yet. We need to go to the settings for this specific repository. And in the left hand side bar, you have a section on pages. So we need to make sure deploy from branch is selected. It's from the main branch, folders root, and that's it for now. We will be coming back here to make changes. Let's go back to our code and make changes to our readme really file. Commit the changes. We won't actually be needing the readme file here, but this allows us to test a couple of important things. For one, we can actually visit our site right now. You can see that there is now a URL given, which is our repository's name. We can actually visit it. And right now, it's showing nothing there. Be aware that this takes a little time to refresh and update. So you may not see your changes immediately. Now let's go ahead and clone this repository on our computer so that we can upload the necessary files. Let's go to the desktop. I will clone it on the desktop here, but you could do it anywhere. Git clone github.com. So instead of typing this out, I might as well copy the link to my repository. Okay. 
let's enter and create a folder called docs output the field list we can see that our readme has come down and the folder we've created has come now we need to put our documentation that was generated in here so how do we do that well the doc archive that we created earlier would be useful I will simply show package contents and copy all the items that are out here into the docs folder. If you face issues, you try the command from here. Copy from Box so, oh, there are folders in there. So let me update copy command. All our folders are in there. Confirm. That okay, including all our file, including the documentation. And now we simply add all this GitHub. So we are back into our repository folder. Use the git add command to add the docs folder. And the git commit command which adds all of them. And the git push command push all of them. We can confirm that. We can see our docs folders out here with all the files and folders we had out here. Everything has come up to the repository. We can now go to settings and make a few changes to our web page. If we just visit the website right now, it's not going to show anything yet. But we will need to change. the docs and save it. The link to a documentation is going to be a little different. It's going to be documentation followed by The name of a documentation. Now this does take a little time to refresh and while we wait for that let me show you what I'm talking about. So within docs you have the documentation folder. There are two actually because I had also created a top level documentation called blog information. So we have two different endpoints and our documentation is going to be inside here. So, one for Amaranthan library, one for blog information. Give it a few moments. Uh, I've seen this take several minutes to refresh. Again, make sure this is set to docs. 
again, if you visit the website itself, it's landing on the main group page. And there you go. It takes a little time for it to appear, but there's our entire documentation available as a website to the public. There's the author we created with all the image and information and including the links because I used the doc archive created using the command line interface. I even have my tutorials out here. So if we go to creating a book, we can see our tutorials on the web page, including our little assessment, all coming up neat and nice. Now, as I said, there are two endpoints, so we could easily go ahead and view the second one. This is another top level page which uses many features we saw earlier, such as uh, row and column arrangement, um, collection of links, small declaration. That's how you can host the documentation. There you go. We have successfully created, viewed, exported, and hosted documentation for our API using Swift Doxy. As you can see, the process is fairly simple and straightforward. Yes, it does appear like it's a lot of work, but building this as a practice will go a long way in making your code more useful and easy to understand for anyone that's using your code. The best way to work with Doxy is to start writing the comments, availability attributes, articles and tutorials as you develop your code. This is far better than leaving it as a standalone activity for later. Go ahead, use Doxy in as many places as possible, even app projects. It will make life very, very simple. Thank you.